Hi there, this is James Claycomb from Houston Baptist University. Today I'll be talking about geophysical and astrophysical simulations in Quickfield. So some of the geophysical simulations we're going to look at, first we'll calculate the geomagnetic field of the Earth, and this will actually be a magnetostatic calculation in axial symmetry. Then we'll look at magnetotellurics, and these simulations will be done in AC magnetics and XY symmetry. Then we'll look at electromagnetic well logging, and also this will be an AC magnetic simulation. Then we'll look at hydrothermal vents um, that roughly two kilometers below the ocean surface, and this will be a steady state heat transfer simulation. The astrophysical simulations we'll be looking at the Jovian system where we're measuring um, or simulating stresses in Europa's ice sheet due to tidal interactions with Jupiter. Then we'll look at induction of currents in Europa's ocean by Jupiter's magnetic field. And finally we'll look at thermal conduction in spherical bodies, small asteroids, and objects that have axial symmetry, spherical symmetry. So our first simulation, we're looking at the geomagnetic field, and this will be an axisymmetric calculation. And I've, I've sketched the geometry here where we have a, uh, an iron core and the radius of the inner core is roughly uh, 1,216 kilometers. This is surrounded by a, a liquid outer core where it's believed that most of the uh, convection currents that are giving rise to the Earth's magnetic field reside in the, the liquid core. Then this is surrounded by a plastic mantle, and finally the, the solid Earth's crust surrounding that is roughly 20 kilometers in thickness. So this will be an axisymmetry and magnetostatics calculation. So let's open up quick field and look at the model geometry. And this is the model in axial symmetry. We can go to problem properties where I've set this up. So you can see that magnetostatics problem type is selected. This is axial symmetry. Now if I look at my block labels, this is air or the vacuum region, and it has a permeability of 1 with zero current. This is the mantle region. I've also given it a permeability of 1, although we can change these values and see how they influence the geomagnetic field. And there's zero current density in the mantle. The liquid core surrounding the iron outer core, uh, I've given it a permeability of 1, uh, and it has a field source of 3 times 10 to the negative 7 amperes per square meter. Now this value has been selected to give us approximately the magnetic field at the Earth's surface, which is roughly 50 microtesla. And this is a, um, a current density, so we can kind of look at this as the average current density. However, the actual current density in the Earth's core um, in the liquid portion is quite complex, and it's believed to be helical. And also the dipolar field of the Earth is also has higher multiple fields due to the very high complex um, nature of the currents that are flowing in the, in the liquid core. This is the iron, the inner iron core, and I've given it a, a permeability of 100, um, although we'll see that this, the Earth's magnetic field is going to be rough, very insensitive to the value we choose for the iron core. And finally, the crust, which is very small on this scale, the Earth's crust 
it's almost imperceptible, so I'll have to kind of zoom in here, and you can see where we've we have a much higher mesh gradient. Uh, this is similar to what we did when we modeled a living cell. We have a very thin plasma membrane surrounding a living cell in the same way with a very thin Earth's crust here, uh, roughly 20 kilometers. And um, so you can see we have, we have the increased mesh density. And I've chosen a permeability of the Earth's crust uh, 1.02. This can vary um, depending on where we have uh, ocean or uh, land and so forth. So let's go ahead and look at the edge labels of the model. So the these are just the boundaries of our solution region. So I have the end caps, and I'm just giving them zero vector potential and the sides zero potential, so we don't care about um, putting any uh, condition here. We, we'd like to remove these boundaries as far as possible. Okay, and then there's there's no vertices defined in the problem here, so we have, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the number of nodes. So if I look at the properties of my model, uh, roughly 28,000 nodes in the whole model with five blocks. And we can go ahead and solve that. It's up to date. Let's go ahead and solve it again so we can get a feel for the solution time here. OK, so it's been solved. We can look at the results. OK, so this is um, an approximation of the, the Earth's magnetic field. You can see that this, the boundaries of the solution region are sort of distorting it here. However, right at the surface of the Earth, we should have relatively good approximation. And what I'm going to do, we can look at individual points here as, as I move my pointer to look at specific values. So you can see that the um, this is the flux density at various locations around the model. And I'm going to look at a contour plot, the magnetic field along the upper crust here. So let me go full scale. So th this contour I've selected to surround the Earth. Okay. And we can look at an XY plot of the flux density. So you can see its peak value roughly is uh, 50 microtesla. And I have chosen the, the currents flowing in the mantle or the uh, liquid core to give us this value of magnetic field at the surface. One thing we can do is vary the permeabilities. For example, we could, we could vary the permeability of the mantle uh, and see if this will affect the magnetic field. We could also use Label Mover to do this automatically and perhaps plot the peak magnetic field versus permeability um, of the mantle. So let's go ahead and create their contour again. Okay. So the flux density is reduced about 25 percent for um, an increase in three of, of the mantle uh, permittivity, permeability. Okay. 